Did Lightroom just kill presets? Like, permanently? Inside this video, we are looking at Lightroom's new adaptive color profiles, and we're going to see whether they live up to the AI hype and whether you're going to be throwing your presets in the garbage. Now, I've got some photos here. We're going to go through together, and I'm going to show you exactly what this new profile does. And if you're wondering, this is available in Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic. You're going to find it in the same place in both of them, in the profile section at the top of your editing panel. You just select adaptive color, and Lightroom's going to analyze the scene. It's going to look at the highlights, the shadows, the blacks, the whites, the contrast, and the colors in your image, and it's going to say, okay, this is what I think it should be based on their AI model. So it's almost like when you apply this profile to any photo, you're getting an individual, unique, custom profile across every single photo you add it to. So that's pretty powerful, right? Let's apply it to a couple other photos and you can kind of see, and then we'll talk about the strengths, the weaknesses, and what I'm finding in applying it to my edits. So this photo, you can see very, very blown out sky, super dark shadows. Let's take our profile and go adaptive color. You can see in our reset photo, very bright, highlights, very dark shadows, and we've got a beautiful sunset in just one click. Now I can adjust my exposure a little, take my highlights down just a bit, maybe my clarity down a little bit, and we've got a really nice edit in just a couple of seconds. Now if I compare that to editing this with a preset, and I reset this photo, it's going to take a couple more clicks, right? I can go into my base sets here and take my exposure down a little bit, take my highlights down, and maybe our contrast up slightly. So I still get there, I get a really nice image in just a couple of clicks, but it took me a little bit longer. So if you're doing hundreds of photos, obviously that's gonna make a difference. And if you're newer to the Lightroom game, it's also gonna be a little bit harder for you because obviously you don't have as much experience, whereas Lightroom can get you there in one click rather than experimenting and figuring this out. And you can see it's raised up our blacks and our shadows without compromising our highlights. And it doesn't really look like an HDR image, which is often what happens when you go in here and we take our shadows way too high and our blacks way too high and our highlights way down, it starts to feel a little unnatural. So that's one thing I'm finding is really good about the adaptive color. This is export ready. If you're into just a super clean, super natural look, adaptive color is pretty much a game changer. Now, here's where we see the first area that I'm kind of on the fence about with adaptive color. Here is the adaptive color preset, and here's my preset. And so you can see that in the adaptive color version, we've saved a lot of detail in the sky. Like we have a really nice kind of sunset vibe going on. We haven't blown anything out on this mountainside here. We've also taken the highlights down in this section of water here that had all the reflections. Now that's good in some ways because we have more room to work with, but I'm finding that sometimes it actually does this in a way that I don't like. So let me just back out here and show you a photo. And we're running in the woods. We've got this nice fog in the sky. Let's go up here to profile and adaptive color. And you're gonna see that Lightroom actually erases the fog. <laughs> like it's applying some dehaze up here. And so we actually lose that kind of dreamy feel of the fog. Whereas if we apply just a normal preset, we've still got that fog. We've still kind of got that sort of dehaze vibe in the photo. And so it really changes the way it feels when we add our adaptive color. Let's go in here, adaptive color, and voila. Now it feels kind of more like an HDR. And you can really see where the greens change, right? We have these nice, warm, muted greens for my preset pack, and then we've got adaptive colors greens, which are just not where I want them to be. Now you could go through and you could say, okay, Ryan, well, we could always go into the color mixer and fix it, right? And in theory, that's true. But what I'm finding is again, if we go into the greens and we try and warm them up and get somewhere kind of similar, and I do like that, I really do, but we still have this kind of weird like HDR feel up here in the top. And just so you can see, if we add our highlights back in, we can recover some of that but I'm finding it sort of, sort of hit or miss and I'm having to adjust it a little bit more than I'd like to. Let's keep going, show you a few more photos. Here is a normal photo with adaptive color thrown on. Okay, that looks really nice. Like in one second, I can get my photo to a print ready stage if you're into a really natural edit. If I go in here, let's apply adaptive with my preset, warm it up and darken it down. That's pretty good, pretty natural, looks nice. Here's the normal preset. We just have more muted tones in the normal one, obviously, because we don't recover those highlights as much. Let's try one more. We've got some nice warmth that we're gonna add, adaptive color. Okay, that looks pretty good. Like I would post that right now. Um, however, if I apply a normal preset, it's gonna be a little bit more work to get it to a stage that I actually like it. And we're not gonna get the same amount of color. So it really depends on your style, whether you like super vibrant images or you want more of a muted look, well then adaptive color is going to help you get there faster. So adaptive color, voila. And with the preset added and adaptive color, here again is where I am finding it's kind of not working as well as I'd like it to. So if you look at their skin tone, you can see it's it's okay, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just kind of magenta, like it's a little bit too red compared to where it should be. Here's one of my presets. I'm gonna call this like a healthier, more natural skin tone. Mine, adaptive, okay? And so what's happening is adaptive is actually taking the highlights on her face, it's pulling them down. 
right? So it's sort of evening things out, but it's also adding this redness to the photo and making the greens a lot more blue. So here's my preset. See the greens are a lot more kind of warm, just muted, and the skin itself is more muted. And we'll say it's more towards like the yellow end or the orange end, rather than the adaptive version, which is far closer to kind of the reddish end. And that's one thing that I'm finding here is that the adaptive profile does a great job at most things. <laughs> but then once in a while with skin tones, I'm not loving it. I vastly prefer my own presets because the skin just feels a lot more natural here. So you could go in here, create new presets. Let's try. Let's grab our hue. We're going to make it maybe a little bit more like this. Make the reds maybe a little bit more orange as well. Take the saturation in the skin down slightly. That's closer. But it's still not quite there because I actually like the contrast on their face. I feel like that sort of adds some glow to them. We've got some highlights and some shadows, whereas this is like a little too mellow for me. Now you might be saying to yourself, Ryan, what about this amount slider? You could actually just take this out and then you're going to get that same sort of effect, aren't you? Well, not really, <laughs> because you're still going to lose that contrast because as I bring the profile down, everything else is going to get more flat. And then the greens, that is the other thing that I'm really finding. Like if we compare those, there is no comparison between which one to me feels like the more natural image. And so I'm gonna say that when it comes to adaptive color, my advice would be use it on images that have high dynamic range, like a sunny day outside in the afternoon where your shadows are super dark and your highlights are super bright. It can be a game changer for kind of getting you to a base level of looks really nice. And then you can go through and adjust a few things to add some style. But where I'm not finding it works as well is when we have an image and we wanna do a really stylistic edit. So if I go in here, and I take my normal presets and I have like say a matte look. I can do that in a click. I can adjust my exposure up and it looks pretty good, like out of the box. Now, if I wanna do the same thing, but add adaptive color on top, just to maybe recover the highlights a little bit, you're gonna see it does not play very well. It's changed the colors completely. And now I have to go into my color mixer and I have to adjust it. So I wish there was a way for adaptive color to actually not affect the colors, which is kind of a funny thing to say. I wish I could just recover the highlights, recover the shadows, but leave my colors alone because I worked really hard at getting them where I want them to be. So did Lightroom's new adaptive color kill my presets? Am I no longer going to use my presets because adaptive color is so good? No. However, if you're a beginner who doesn't totally understand how all of the different sliders work, and you just want something that is going to get you print ready, natural, beautiful colors in one click, not a stylistic edit, but just natural colors, then adaptive color does a really decent job, right? Like this is a good edit. However, I would say it's more of a beginner edit, right? Like I don't really love these greens. They're a little bit too highlighter green. So I'd have to go in here and kind of mute them down, take my luminance down, adjust like that until I get to a place where I actually like what the photo feels like. So that's my take on adaptive color. I'd love to hear how you're using it. Is this a tool you're relying on and shifting your edits towards and away from presets? Or is this something you're kind of using here or there or do you ignore it completely? Leave it in the comments below if this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want more like this, and I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome.